welcome to the Britannia special of Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show that went looking for a New England but found anarchy in the UK. <laughs> Our two team captains this week are the slightly troubled Amy Bro and the even more troubled Miff Winehouse. <laughs> Alan first guest tonight is an author, broadcaster, historian and music journalist who was the last person to interview Jimi Hendrix, was a great friend of John Lennon and went on tour with Led Zeppelin to write their biography. He's also done some really cool stuff though. Please welcome <laughs> Richie York. <laughs> Alan's second team member tonight is a comedian and radio announcer who adores everything British, including big red buses, royal infidelity and scurvy. I pray you welcome <laughs> Hamish Blake. <laughs> Smith's first guest tonight is one of the UK's biggest selling jazz artists. He's been nominated for two Brit Awards and a Grammy and has even worked with Clint Eastwood creating music for his film Grand Torino. This punk's not lucky. His music just blows your head clean off. Please welcome Jamie Cullum. <laughs> this final guest tonight is an award-winning British comedian with the face of an angel, the heart of a lion and the mouth of a drunken sailor. Please welcome Sarah Millican. <laughs> We've got to address the awkward issue of both Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. One of you is not Amy Winehouse. Now, who is it? It's just pretty awkward. Normally, we call each other. Mm. <laughs> the one night. Yeah, the one night. That you both turn up as Amy Winehouse. Oh, I sold my phone for drugs. <laughs> This one smells like the real Amy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you yeah. went on tour with Amy, didn't you? Yeah, yeah this, she definitely smells right. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, yeah, like crack and cats. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> what? Crack and cats? She's got lots of cats, hasn't she? I have no idea about her, her pussies. <laughs> yeah. It's turning to the carry-on special. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, you've clearly got the whole Dusty Springfield uh, yes. look going on down there. Yeah, I work it well, don't I? Oh, you're owning it. <laughs> Until the voice... keep it on later on. <laughs> I don't think Dusty Springfield was a Geordie, though, was she? No, I can't do accents, so... Well, I can. I can do the one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you maybe sing a bit of Son of a Preacher Man but in a Geordie accent? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, Richie, you've got the whole uh, John Lennon look going on. That's right, yeah. Which is amazing, because John Lennon was a friend of yours. He was, indeed. In yeah. fact, I'm pretty sure as we go through this show tonight, being that every artist we mention is from Great Britain, you're probably going to have known or worked with all of them at some point. One or two, I think. So what I thought I might do tonight is just give you a bell. Ah. Uh, <laughs> rather than going, have you worked with them, have you worked with them? Yep. Can it's you just boring. ring that whenever an artist is mentioned that you worked with? Certainly. Can OK. We, can we test it? You go for it. Um, John Lennon. That's going to be really... Annoying. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Johan Bach. That was to see if you're a liar. <laughs> there are five questions tonight on our special topic, which of course is Britannia. Firstly, let's check our buzzers. Hamish, would you like to do the honours for your side? Could be the only time tonight, so a bit exciting. <laughs> ah, big bet. Big bet. And Jamie, do you want to do the honours for your side? Everyone on your buzzers. Let's play Spicks and Specs. Your first question for one point. Complete this line from Gilbert and Sullivan's HMS Pinafore. <laughs> yes. And the time is correct answer o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is an English man. He is an English man. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. First well, one. Yeah. English people don't know anything about uh, those people. Really? Yeah. I'm not wrong, right? No, no, we just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So two of the people on this show don't know anything about the stuff we're talking about because it's where they're from. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to make that three of the people on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not from where they're from. No, I'm obviously Italian. Uh, next question. <laughs> obviously Italian. Have a listen to this recording of a football crowd live. I need two things, the name of the song and the soccer match it is traditionally sung before. Yes. Oh, I've, I've got no idea, but here we go. Um, <laughs> it's probably the FA Cup that it's sung before. It is the FA Cup final, yes. You'll never walk alone. Oh, abide with me. Ah. Abide with me, that's the oh, one, yes. Yeah. The third question. The great British bands of the 60s started by performing established American tunes. For three points, name the three bands that released the following songs. Chuck Berry's Come On, the Isley Brothers' Twist and Shout, and the traditional House of the Rising Sun. Yes. First of all, the Stones. Uh, yes. Secondly, the Beatles. Yes. 
third, Eric Burden and the Animals. Three mm. points well out done. of three. Yeah. Let's, let's do that with the bell involved. The Rolling right. Stones. OK, the Beatles. The Animals. Really? <laughs> so let's... I mean, Rolling Stones clearly met and worked yep. with. Um, you were John Lennon's... Peace and, Envoy. Peace, peace envoy. envoy. During his war is over peace campaign days, yeah. And what did that entail, being his peace envoy? Um, going around the world, trying to meet similar spirits, set up uh, uh, connections for him so that one day he might be able to do an international campaign. And so what, when they were... Uh, John and Yoko were lying in bed in the Amsterdam Hilton, mm -hmm. where were you? Were you part of I that? actually wasn't at that one, but I certainly was at the Montreal bed in, and that's why I, where I got this suit. I got that to wear to the bed in in Montreal Has in this been in the presence of Oh, John? absolutely. Absolutely. And now Alan as well. That's right. <laughs> Who would have thought That's something right. in the presence of John Lennon and this wig would ever meet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your fourth question tonight. Wales may be a small part of Britain, but it has had its fair share of musical success. For four points, name these four taffies. Um, Tom Jones. Yep. Um, Shirley Bassey. Shirley Bassey. Yep. Is that Keith? Shaken Sh Stevens is yep. on the end. Bonnie yep. Taylor. And that, yeah. Four points out of four. Bonnie Taylor is the other one. Five points. Name five British bands, not solo artists, that played at Wembley in the original Live Aid concert. Yep. Whoa. Queen. Yes, Queen is one of them. Duran Duran? Uh, no, not Duran Duran. I'll give you three more guesses. Say Queen, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> say, say it again, he might not remember. Queen. A queen, yes, two. <laughs> Bananarama didn't get a go, did they? <laughs> didn't. Culture Club, the police? Uh, not Culture Club, not police. Wham! No, not Wham. I'm going to throw it over to this I side. Think dire Straits. Dire Straits oh, is one, yes. Dire Straits. Uh, the Who. The Who is another yes. one, yes. <laughs> uh, there are two more that I'm looking for. Tears for Fears? No, not Tears for Fears. Anyone um, on this side? Fine Young Cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> Not Queen. Queen. Certainly. <laughs> Hang on. Queen. Three points. <laughs> Status quo. Well. Status quo. Yay. And one more. I've really gone blank. I Style can't... Council. Oh. Style Council. Oh, Thank oh, you, Alan. Right. There it is. Yeah. Four points on that side. We've got Queen. Again, let's get the bell ready and let's just go through the bands that played at Live Aid. Status quo. No. Spandau Ballet. Nope. Oh, that was what I was trying to think of. Ultravox. Nope. Yeah, you I don't want to, mate. They're rubbish. Style Council. Uh, uh, yeah. Did we? Yeah. yeah, we did. The Who? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Queen. No. no. We'd, we were booked in, but then we had to do the... <laughs> 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 Demonstrates. Yes. Yeah, good guys. Good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last group that played that no-one else got were the Coldstream Guards. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, Didn't interview them. No, not interesting. <laughs> They're actually signed to the same label. You're signed to the same label as the Cold String Guards? Yes. Right. You must have rockin' Christmas parties for the world. <laughs> <ladies. laughs> Can't this be remixes, everything? Jay-Z's work with them? Oh, really? No, that, that part's not. <laughs> At the end of the first round, score check. Miff, Jamie, Sarah, five points. Alan, Richie, Hamish in front, ten points. Team will be playing some records using a bicycle-powered record player. You'll have to identify the songs whilst on the bike. Tonight, our guest DJ is our very favourite, DJ Mafia. Hey. And just for tonight, our bicycle pays homage to the goodies. Hey. So, Mick, Jamie and Sarah, you'll be up first. Would you all like to make your way up to the bike, please? <laughs> This could be quite interesting. <laughs> for right. so many reasons. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Don't, don't touch the hair. This is so familiar. <laughs> Your time starts now. What well, can't touch the pedal? <laughs> Coconuts, yes. Next song, please. Build me up, Buttercup. Build me up, Buttercup, yes. Next song. Oh, um, uh, it's, um, it's very love appropriate. Love is the drug. Love is the drug, yes. yes. Very appropriate. <laughs> on your back and on your legs. And when the snow falls, you're found in summer, it's... 
played samba with the others on the beach at sun. And you sang me on the phone. I've got a really nice voice. Jamie's high off the fumes of mint swing. Go to the next song. It was Where Do You Go, My Lovely by Peter Sarsted. Oh, um, Black Knight. Oh, uh, close. Black, uh, um, it's, um, Black, uh, Black Dog, um, it's Aussie, um, uh, Black Paranoid. Sa Paranoid Black Yes, there it is. Time's up. Four points. Four points. What an amazing trio you made on a bicycle, I have to say. <laughs> Do you know what? For a second, it looked like you had gone back on tour with Amy Winehouse, but she'd brought her mum along. <laughs> Alan, Richie and Hamish, it's your turn. Uh, if you'd like to make your way to the bike, please. To the bike. Alan, Richie and Hamish. This, this is a truly terrifying Settle image. Settle up, boys. <laughs> Oh, After you. Really Thank you, terrifying. sir. These pants are made to ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your time starts now. OK. That's nice. Good pace, man. It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to Tipperary, yes. Next song. <laughs> That's me, isn't it? Maggie May Rock's me. It's the theme from the goodies, yes. Yeah, it's good work. Next song. Pack up your troubles in your old kid bag. Pack up your troubles in your old kid bag well, and smile, smile, smile. Richie and I just love for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to get out of the house. <laughs> Training, you know. <laughs> <laughs> good oh, I'm, I'm get it on. Get it on by T Rex. Next song. Oh, it's good, right? Whatever it is, it's good, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> and we should swing past that scones place. Yeah. <laughs> the end of your time anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six points. Yeah. Oh, that's it, guys. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Richie Hamish. The song you missed, by the way, was Black Knight by Deep Purple. That was the last one that oh. you were just getting to. Oh. Hey, can we also have a round of applause for DJ Mafia? Yeah. So at the end of that round, Miff Jamie Sarah on nine points, Alan Richie Hamish in front, 16 points. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Good work. Three artists and three interesting facts. You have to match the artist to the fact. Uh, Alan Ritchie Hamish, your artists are Sex Pistols Loaded Gun, Sid Vicious, Queen's Brian May, and Kids in America songstress Kim Wilde. Mm. You have to match those legends of British music to the following quotes, which are Performing, I can take it or leave it. Horticulture is far more challenging. I just cash in on the fact that I'm good looking and I've got a nice figure and girls like me. <laughs> and there are times when I flick through magazines and think I'm in danger of becoming a prisoner of my own hair. Which one of those artists matches which one of those quotes? Well, for some reason, I think Kim Wilde is into horticulture. Maybe. Hang on, let, let's see if we need to ring the bell. Sid Vicious? No. Brian May from Queen? Uh, yes. Kim Wilde? Yes. OK. All right. Uh, All right. Did, did she ever say any of those things to you? No. There <laughs> <laughs> goes our shortcut. It sort of sounds like something that Brian May might say just to throw everyone off the track. The horticulture thing? Yeah. I was just thinking about him and the hair thing because he had a... Big he head of hair going on. He did. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, th I think Sid Vicious said, I'm good looking and I've got a nice figure and girls like it. Yeah, it's it's tough having a nice figure. It's... <laughs> it sucks. So I can imagine that, you know. Well, so what do you reckon? You know two of them. Give it a go. Um, I would have to say that I think Kim Wilde might have said, I'm good looking, I've got a nice figure. OK, Kim Wilde said that. But you've met them all. I think mate. point I... of culture is definitely the Brian May line. Yeah. I just right. have that feeling. OK. Which leaves Sid Kim... Vicious becoming a prisoner of his own hair. Yeah. <laughs> I know how he feels. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of those is correct. <laughs> Why didn't you use 
my so well of weird. knowledge. Well, these guys, Ring these guys, the bell. <laughs> Talk to me. Oh. These guys want to have a go, and it's not for a point. Kim Wilder's horticulture because I think she's got a garden column in one of the yeah. newspapers. Uh, right. Yes, indeed, it was. I would, well. Yeah, I would say Brian May's the hair. Mm. Yep. And Sid Vicious is the body. If that had been your question, you would have got three well points done. out. Yay. Yay. Well Jamie and Sarah, your artists are the spectacled, bewigged and beloved Elton John, uh, the rolling stone that was Un rock star Bill Wyman, and the windmill impersonating member of The Who, Pete Townsend. You have to match them to their quotes, which are, I have very interesting hobbies, like archaeology and photography. I was more ashamed that I couldn't work the washing machine than the fact that I was taking drugs, and I know how it feels to be a woman because I am a woman, and I won't be classified as just a man. Wow. Which one of those artists made which one of those quotes? I'd like to think, because Bill Wyman was a bit of a an odd one, because he married Mandy Smith mm. when she was 14. So I'd like to think that he had interests other than what? young girls and, <laughs> and <laughs> rock and roll. So we're going to give him archaeology. I reckon he might say something like that She too. likes young things and old things. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> 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 all bases. Still pretty sinister. It is. And yeah. one is the washing machine one. Oh, see, I reckon that's Elton. Oh, no. He totally knows how to work a washing machine. Pete Townsend doesn't think he's a woman, does he? <laughs> 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 or was it windmill? <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely woman. Uh, I know how it feels to be a woman a because man. I am a woman. <laughs> Have you met any of these people? I've met Elton John, yeah. What's he like? like? He's really... Oh, hang on, pass the over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Throw me your bell. Yep. <laughs> Go on, ask me again. Ha have you met? <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, Pete Townsend. No. Bill Wyman? <laughs> I played with him. Every when, 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 I played when? music with him in London. Um, we, he, he has this uh, blues band. They're called uh, Bill Wyman and the Rhythm Kings, and I, I played with Bill Wyman. Well, then you oh. should know what the answer is. Yes. Did, he take, did, he take, <laughs> did he take? Did he have loads of old pots with him? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he did have a camera with him. Really? Well, <laughs> well no, possibly no. in his bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Elton John, the woman. Yep. Bill Wyman, the archaeologist. Okay. And Pete Townsend couldn't use the washing machine. OK. The correct answers are, Elton John said, I was more ashamed that I couldn't work the washing machine than the fact that I was taking drugs. Didn't get that right. Bill Wyman said, I have very interesting hobbies like Yay! archaeology and photography. You got that right. Oh. Pete Townsend said, I know how it feels to be a woman because I am a woman <laughs> and I won't be classified as just a man. Although I would have accepted the answer Alan Bro tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, just so you can ring the bell one more time, I'm going to throw another name. Uh, uh, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> what exactly did you do with Clint Eastwood? Uh, well, I'm friends with his, his son, Kyle, who's a, a jazz bass player. Oh. And he works on all the scores with his dad on the films. And uh, I quite by chance got involved with a film called Grace Is Gone, that they were working on. Yep. I was recording a demo for another singer. It was actually meant for James Blunt. Right. And they needed someone to help turn the score and the lyrics into a song. <laughs> So I did that and I, I did a little demo in my studio and Clint heard the demo and he said, I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did Grace Is Gone and then uh, they got me involved to work on Gran Torino. And I kind of came in to help uh, uh, with part of the bridge of the, the whole score and, yeah, and then wrote the lyrics uh, to the final song at the end. And it's funny because Clint actually sings my lyrics. And he kind of, you know, he dies. Oh, I shouldn't have told you. That, it's it's, it's come out here. We've, yeah. It's been in cinemas here. But they say, yeah. that, that, <laughs> might, they, they say that, that might be his last uh, acting role. Oh. And so at the end of the film, he actually sings my words. And I was, I it could be the it. last, wow. he could have spoken your song. words as the last of his voice ever on film. That's right, yeah. It's crazy. Really? And we recorded it in his house as well. Did you go to have the another room? bell ring. Did, yeah. Yeah. Did, ring did you go to the bell. toilet? With him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not really, no. You didn't go to his toilet? I How long were you there? <laughs> Two days. <laughs> wow. yeah, I was, I was tight, really tightly wound up. Hang <laughs> At the end of that round, the scores are Miff, Jamie, Sarah on 10 points, Alan, Richie, Hamish in front, 16 points. <laughs> One member of each team will be singing well-known songs using the words of an unrelated piece of text. Uh, your teammates have to identify those songs. Jamie will be singing first for Miff and Sarah, and you'll be taking your lyrics from There's Only One David Beckham oh, by Stafford that. Hildred and Tim Newbank. Oh, fantastic. Uh, nice. That is your book. Those are your songs. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Cullen. Yay! You ready? I'm ready. David Robert. Joseph Beckham. Was born in Leyton, East London. 
Song two by Blur. Yeah. Yes. Uh, next song, please. Posh and Beck's own wedding was planned like a military operation. It might have looked quite glitzy, an expensive affair. Yet, in fact, David and Victoria planned the whole day. Yes. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, final song, please. It's not going too far to say that Dave is personally responsible for making it fashionable to be a caring father and a faithful husband. <laughs> David's frank and open enthusiasm for his marriage and his wife and devotion to their son had an enormous impact on young men. According to... Yes. It's Starman. It's Starman David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> is that, is that, was that one of the hardest things you've had to do in your career so far? It's literally the worst book I've ever read. It's terrible. <laughs> Hamish, you'll be singing for Alan and Richie. Yes, I'm ready. And you'll be taking your lyrics from Victory, the sixth volume of Winston Churchill's War Speeches, compiled by Charles <laughs> e. That's your book. Ladies and gentlemen, Hamish Blake. Yeah. At the beginning of the new year, <laughs> I can't <a> promise. <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna get it from this bit. Oh, I'll just get through it. <laughs> that the end is near. But I can say that the Nazi beast is cornered and its destruction is inevitable. The wounds inflicted by the arm, but on the ground the lines are mortal. And when we in Britain speak of the Great Alliance, we mean not only the armies, navies, air force of the United Nations, we mean also the resistance movements throughout Europe, <laughs> whose members have played so gallant a part in total war against the brutal and unscrupulous enemy. Oh. Gosh, we really hate those Nazis. Who else hates lots of Nazis? I don't want Hate the Nazis. I'm Winston Churchill, and I hate the Nazis. And if you hate the Nazis, talk to me. Uh, wipe me out before you go, guys. Yes, it was oh. wipe me out before you go. Well done. Um, next song, please. If you want to zoom in a bit, it's like a little bit more <laughs> sensitive. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's a dance number. Okay. <laughs> we may pause for a moment, we may rejoice, but it must only be for the purpose of regathering strength. <laughs> there may be danger. <laughs> downtown, downtown. 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 <laughs> right, final song, please. I am unable to speak without emotion. Dear desert rats, may your glory ever shine. Have you got it, Al? Yeah. Invisible touch by Jim. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Hamish Blake. Yeah. And here in that round, scores out with Jamie Sheriff, 13 points. Alan Ritchie, Hamish still in front, 19 points. <laughs> Hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Which band sang about a cat that is so wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully... Yes. Cure. Wonderfully pretty? The Cure, yes. Yeah. The song Paper Planes by English rapper M.I.A. Oh, hell, was in the movie. Um, yep. Bollywood. Slumdog Millionaire. Yes. Yes. Slumdog Millionaire is what I was looking for. Have a listen to this. Name the song. Go out in the midday sun. The top is to burn. Yes. I think you'll find, Adam, that's uh, an old coward, Mad Dogs and Englishmen. Right. Yes, it well is, done. Hamish Blake. Yeah, yeah it's, um, I work at a top 40 station, so we're always <laughs> playing it. <laughs> Complete this London music theatre lyric from 1939. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit. Run, run, run. Run, 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 indeed. <laughs> <laughs> If you take the high road and I take the low road, we'll still never meet on the bonny bonny banks of which Scottish loch? Loch Ness. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Philip Lohman. Yes. Good luck. The singer who got his teenage kicks with the undertones was Fergal Hoon. Sharky. Sharky. And your final question. According to the song, when they tried to make her go to rehab, what did Amy Winehouse say? <laughs> Come on, Alan. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> Show the final scores were Miff, Jamie, Sarah ended up on 18 points, but three points in front. Alan, Richie, Hamish, 21 points. <laughs> Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Richie York, Hamish Blake, Jamie Cullum and Sarah Milliken. Of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. I'd like to leave you tonight with a performance by Elton Jack as he takes us through a medley of British classics. Thanks for watching Specs and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. Save.